Welcome. My name is Morley Robbins. I'm the founder of the Magnesium Advocacy Group on Facebook. Uh, I started that group about four years ago. It'll be four years in January. Uh, it's four dog years. It was a long years of uh, helping people learn the truth. Uh, but I came upon it because I spent my career of 32 years working as a hospital executive and as a consultant uh, in that same field and knew that there was more to the story. And I made a conscious decision to become a wellness coach uh, and really didn't expect that this would be how I would end my career. But it's been an amazing journey over the last eight years. Um, and I'm very grateful for the support that I've gotten, especially from the folks at Jigsaw Health. Uh, they've been an amazing resource. They make great products. And I take their Jigsaw Magnesium every day. Uh, in fact, I, I tease people. But there are only three absolutes that you have in life. You gotta have air, you gotta have water, and you gotta have magnesium. And you wouldn't go a day without air, would you? You wouldn't go a day without, without water. Well, trust me, living where we live with all the stress that we have on this planet, you don't wanna go a day without magnesium. And uh, that's a particularly good form that I've, I've had a lot of uh, benefit from and a lot of the clients I work with around the world have as well. So we wanted to do a video to introduce people to the Facebook group. We're now at a point where we're coming up on 70,000 people all over the globe. Uh, I've forgotten the, the count now of how many countries have representation, but it's, we have our fingerprint in a lot of, a lot of places, places I've never even heard of. Um, but we're adding about 1,000 people a week. And it's growing at a point where we just need to give people an orientation about what we stand for at the Magnesium Advocacy Group, where I'm coming from, what I've learned along the way, and just give you a kind of an overview of, of why we take the position we take on certain issues. Um, I think that Mark Twain said it best. It's not what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for certain that just ain't so. In the field of nutrition, and medicine, I would add, is littered with a lot of people who think they know the answer. They have a lot of strong beliefs about what's right and what's wrong. But <clears throat> what I've done over the last eight years is pierce the mythology that dominates the world of nutrition. And most of it hinges around a complete lack of awareness about how important magnesium is as a mineral. I mean, it, it is so foundational and it, it was, you know, again, it was eight years ago when I started this journey. And it started by reading Carolyn Dean's book called The Magnesium Miracle. It was like reading a murder mystery. I suddenly discovered why all those people were in the hospital beds when I was working as an executive, because they were all magnesium deficient. And it, it was really a very humbling moment to come to realize just how unaware we all are around how basic and foundational this mineral is. I mean, it, it really is the, uh, it's the orchestra leader. It's the conductor of all the, um, the minerals in our body. So it's, it's, a, it's a very um, profound concept to think of just, you know, one mineral being that, that important, but it is. And what it's led me to do is <clears throat> really try to boil down this message so that People can really crystallize and understand what do I have to be mindful of? What are the real basics? And so what I've done is I've created a very simple model so that we can all understand it. And, and what I've used as my reference point is, is if I can understand it, I think everybody can understand it. Because I'm a, I'm a pretty simple guy. I'm, I'm really a, a more of a, a carpenter at heart. You know, carpenters use their thumb to measure an inch. And I try to get it down to the basics. So here's something that's very important to understand. Uh, in my fundamental paradigm, there really are only two events taking place, from cradle to grave. Our magnesium status is dropping as we get older, as we go through life. And I affectionately refer to it as our magnesium burn rate. And it accelerates as we get older. You know, because when you're 16 and you break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, oh, that's the end of the world. But when you're in your 60s and your spouse gets a serious illness or your parents start to die 
or there's some economic crisis in your life. That's a very different magnesium burn rate. And the loss of magnesium does, in fact, accelerate as we get older. It's a pretty basic uh, concept to understand. But there's a, there's a flip side to it. And it's, this is equally as important, that as we go through life, we're actually accumulating iron. Who knew? It turns out, when you really get into the, the fundamentals and, and really understanding the planet Earth, the number one element on planet Earth is iron. It's 36% of the Earth's composition. That's not insignificant. And there's also a lot of mythology around that, that a lot of people think they're anemic, when in fact they're not. But we'll save that for a later point in the, in the conversation. But the point is, these two mineral events crisscross. And they crisscross about the time we're 40 years of age. And anyone who is over 40 knows how different they feel on that side of the crisscross than they did when they were before the crisscross. Because that's when all of the ailments and the aches and pains and all the symptoms begin to appear as the body has more iron and less magnesium to work with. Because it turns out that iron is, in fact, the metal that ages us. It's what's behind what's called oxidative stress. It's also the trigger for the loss of magnesium that leads to inflammation. So it's a very important dynamic to understand how these two minerals relate to each other. And it turns out that over the course of the day, magnesium and iron are fighting over oxygen all day long. So what is magnesium oxide? It's the brightest burning fire on the planet. And the Chinese discovered that 4,000 years ago when they discovered fireworks. That's where they come from, magnesium oxide. What's the flip side? It's called iron oxide. We know it as rust. And that's what, that's what slows us down. That's what changes enzyme pathways. That's what causes the aging process that occurs inside the mitochondria to stop the production of ATP. That is the cellular event that creates aging, is the loss of energy, the loss of what's called ATP. And ATP, by the way, doesn't work unless it's complexed with magnesium. So this is ATP. This is ATP holding magnesium. And these three appendages that are sticking out there are the phosphate groups. And they don't materialize until ATP is holding magnesium. It's really important. In fact, it's so foundational that <clears throat> it affects the functioning of 3,700 proteins in the body. I think it's pretty important. So we've got these fundamental minerals and how they relate. And when we start life, we have what's called a normal liver. And the liver is located on the right side, just under your, under your uh, rib cage. And it's an incredibly important organ. You may know that. I just want to emphasize it. But what happens as the body ages, as we go through the stress of life, as our magnesium burn rate builds, it changes the whole concept and construction and functionality of the liver. And what happens is it becomes a Ferris wheel. And I use that term because I'm a very witty guy. I spell it differently. But it turns out that the Ferris form of iron is what causes all the problems in the body because iron exists in two different states. And it's the Ferris form that is so problematic. And so what happens is, as we go through stress, the iron starts to build up in our liver. And it starts to have far-reaching effects. And out on the perimeter, out in the seats on this Ferris wheel, are all the symptoms, all the problems, all the ailments, all the labels that we've begin, been given. Oh, you're diabetic. Oh, you have depression. Oh, you have... IBS, or whatever, whatever label you've been branded with that you now wear up here, and you start to believe that, um, it turns out that it really is a result of the axle that's at the center of that Ferris wheel isn't working right. So let's take a closer look at what that axle is. 
These are my mineral priorities. You obviously know that my first love is magnesium, or I refer to her as Maggie. She's just amazing in terms of what, what it does and what it's able to ensure as, as we go through life. <clears throat> but think of magnesium as the mineral of motion. When you're trying to get things done, especially inside the body, there are handoffs that need to be made in order for the body to function properly. Well, those handoffs, those enzymatic pathways, work best when magnesium is at an optimal state. So magnesium is, in fact, the mineral of motion. But what's its polar opposite? It's called calcium. What is calcium? It's the mineral of cement. Interesting. We don't think about it that way. You've been raised to believe that we can't, can't get enough calcium and that it's, it's what runs the body. That's not true. <clears throat> calcium serves at the pleasure of magnesium. There are three hormones that are devoted to assessing and making sure that calcium levels are at the, right, at the right level, but also at the right location of the body. And those are calcitonin, parathyroid hormone, and the third that you may not be as familiar with, but it's called hormone D. You think of it as vitamin D, but it's actually a hormone. In fact, it's the oldest hormone on the planet Earth. It's also the most powerful hormone in the human body. It's not candy. And it turns out that all three of those hormones only work properly when magnesium is at optimal levels. So it's, it's a very unusual set of relationships that the calcium level is, in fact, dictated by the magnesium level. It's very, very important to understand that. Another very important mineral is called copper. Uh, everybody knows copper. Uh, our pennies used to be made with copper, you know, back in the day. Now they're made with zinc. That's, I find that very funny. But um, it turns out that copper is very, a very, very important mineral because you can't make ATP, unless you have bioavailable forms of copper. And ATP doesn't work, as we were talking about, unless it's holding on to magnesium. But copper has a particularly important function inside the body, and I call it the mineral of sunshine. You know that, you know, back in the day when our grandparents used to do the laundry, they would hang them outside to dry. And why would they do that? because they knew the sunshine would oxidize the clothes. It's a, and oxidation is a very important function, and that's what copper ensures inside the body, is make sure that things get oxidized properly. And one of the most important things that it oxidizes is the mineral called iron. And again, iron is the mineral of rust. It's what ages us. It is that that aging process is taking place because iron is not being properly managed by the copper. And it begins to create this dynamic between magnesium, calcium, copper, and iron. And clearly there are other minerals involved. There are 18 essential minerals, but these four really play a very powerful role in keeping the body in balance, but also keeping the liver in balance. <clears throat> and what I want to point out is that there's also this concept, or it's an enzyme, that's very, very important for the functionality of copper, and that's called ceruloplasm, and that's what the, uh, the picture is. But what ceruloplasm guarantees is to make sure that the iron moves from that ferrous state into what's called a ferric state, and that's what enables different proteins to be attached to iron, like hemoglobin and transferrin and lactoferrin and all these other critical proteins that regulate and, and make sure that iron is doing its proper job in the body, <clears throat> but not getting distracted, not getting uh, into a state where it's going to create all sorts of problems for the individual. So it's very, very important to understand that, that magnesium is unique in that it's the only mineral that I know of where you can 
successfully and safely restore its deficiency through supplementation. All the other minerals need to be done indirectly. And that's a very different concept for people to think about because we've all been raised to believe that, that it's a, it's a high-low game in nutrition. Oh, that's low? Take this and it'll get high. It doesn't work that way except with magnesium. And what makes copper unique is it only works when it's complexed with that enzyme called ceruloplasmin. It's, it's the only enzyme that I know of that has eight copper atoms inside it. It's an incredibly complex and important enzyme in the body. <clears throat> but note that I'm not talking about treating them in isolation because you can't really talk about calcium status unless you're giving true understanding to what the magnesium status is. And you can't really talk about any consideration of iron unless you understand both magnesium and copper status. And it's also important that I'm not focusing on zinc. Zinc is a great mineral, but it's really a, it's a very distracting mineral because a lot of people feel that they are zinc deficient, but it turns out that zinc and iron compete with each other for absorption. And so if zinc is low, it's a safe bet that iron is too high. And so you have to be very careful that when you start to then shift to taking zinc supplements, what you're going to do is you're going to change the chemistry of the liver. It's going to create another protein called metallothionine. And that protein binds up copper a thousand times stronger than it binds up zinc. So it effectively puts copper into a jail cell. Copper is not the bad guy. Copper needs to be complexed with its enzyme so that it can work the magical things that it does work inside the body. And so I think there's a lot of confusion and, and misunderstanding about what in fact is, is going on. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what the priorities are and, and why we tend to focus on certain issues and, and not other issues. The other great revelation for me was when I started this work, I was very myopic. I was very focused on just focus on magnesium. I thought, you know, come on. It's just, all you got to do is, you know, restore magnesium status and, and everything would be fine. And there were practitioners who said, Morley, it's more complicated than that. If it was that simple, we would have done that. So I just thought, well, they must not understand it the way I do. And then after a period of time, I came to realize they were right. It, it is more complicated. Because it turns out that the, the engine of disease is actually a, it's a railway. And one of the rails is, in fact, magnesium deficiency. And, and I really you know, was very uh, deceived for a number of years to think that it was just a single railway. And it turns out that there's another player. And that other player is called iron toxicity. And you're thinking, iron toxicity? What, what are you talking about? I'm a, the doctor's been telling me I'm anemic. And, and I've, been, I've been taking iron supplements for years. Well, I've got a lot of clients who've been doing that as well. And it's because they don't understand how to interpret a blood test. <clears throat> the important thing is that <clears throat> there have been some very profound changes made in our food system since the Second World War. Many that we're not even aware of, or none that we're, we've never really connected all the dots. We, we know that commercial farming's had a very significant impact on the availability of minerals in the soil. We know that minerals are not as prevalent in water, but not many people realize that in 1941, they started adding iron to our food. It's called iron enrichment or iron fortification. And as best as I can tell, the only people who've been enriched by that is big pharma uh, because it's a very bad thing to do. Uh, and they've been doing it, like I said, since 1941. So we have 75 years of iron fortification in our food system. And it's been principally through wheat and wheat products. And you'd think, well, OK, if, so the, if the government's going to mandate that we're going to add iron, of course they're going to use organic iron, right? No. 
Unfortunately, they've been using iron filings. And for those of you who are intrigued by that thought, you can go out to YouTube and you can see the videos where people have taken cereal, ground it up, put it in their, in their milk, and they can put a magnet in it, and they can pull the cereal out of, out of the bowl. And that's going inside our body. And that's a very bad thing. And so we have to be really mindful of the fact that that's been added. And then in 1971, the FDA sought to increase that threefold. And 37 scientists from around the world came to Washington, D.C. to testify against that decision. Basically, what the gist of their testimony was is, what are you trying to do, kill people? And so, in a magnanimous gesture, the FDA backed off their position, and they only chose to increase it by 50%. So we've got the iron coming into the food. Then in the 80s, they added high fructose corn syrup. And then in the 90s, they added GMO products. And what's significant about both of those two events is that they lower copper status in the liver, and they increase iron status in the liver, which is the exact opposite of what's needed. And it has a profound effect on the functionality uh, of the liver and its ability to generate energy, but also to support the amazing uh, enzyme and, and detox functions of the liver. So all of that has been going on in the background that we weren't even aware of. And so what's important to understand is that there are pathogens out there, and there are pathogens in our body. And, you know, of course, Louis Pasteur was famous for getting people to become very fearful of the booga booga bugs. And it turns out that all the pathogens, bacteria, fungus, virus, and parasites, all four of them feed on an iron buffet. How convenient is that? And so the food system has been conspiring to support the pathogenic activity that's taking place in our body. And it's created a lot of chaos. And what the MAG group is seeking to do is to begin to dispel that chaos and dispel the mythology that seems to uh, pervade the universe. So hopefully that, that makes more sense to you and you have a better sense of, of what we're trying to do. So it turns out that when the minerals are, when those four key minerals are in, in proper balance, the, the presence of the Ferris wheel is very subdued. We don't have to worry about it. But invariably what happens is, as we go through life, we go through stress, and what happens is the magnesium starts to get depressed. And the copper starts to get pinched. And it starts to affect the function of its key enzyme, ceruloplasm. And when that happens, calcium's building, iron is building, and then what happens? That's when the Ferris wheel appears. It's axiomatic. And so what happens is we've all been taught to focus on that Ferris wheel and to focus on the seats at the outside of that Ferris wheel because that's where all of the action is. That's where all the symptoms are. That's where all the attention is given, not on the axle. And what we're all about at the MAG group is focus on the axle and don't worry about the seats. I recognize that these conditions may in fact exist, but that's not my worry. My primary focus in helping people around the world is to get them to realize that by focusing on that axle, they will begin to change the function of their liver. They will begin to increase the presence of that key enzyme, ceruloplasm, and it will have a profound effect on the functionality of their body. And I've, I've seen it all over the globe. And, and the real gist of it is a very simple protocol that I have been developing over the last several years. That is, it's known as the CP protocol. You might hear about it as the Mother Nature protocol. Uh, and it's one that a lot of people have found a lot of benefit from that I want to share with you right now. So again, don't fret about the symptoms that you've been trained to worry about. Focus on the axle. That's where the action is. So here's the secret sauce. There are really two principal parts to it. There's a whole series of stops. And in a minute, we're going to talk about the starts. And 
The stops are very, very important. They're as important to stop these events as it is to start the ones that we're going to talk about. And you may be surprised by some of the things that we're recommending. The first thing right out of the blocks, stop taking hormone D. In fact, this morning, I was sitting outside of Starbucks having a very pleasant cup of coffee. And I'm in Arizona, where I think the last time I checked, there's plenty of sunshine every day in this state, probably at least 325 days out of the year. And happened upon a conversation with three women who were yammering about how bad they felt. And I said, I'm just curious, do you guys take vitamin D? And they went, oh, yeah. I said, no, stop. And then so I tried to explain to them why. But the point is, what vitamin D does is it stops the liver's production of ceruloplasm. It's a very bad thing. And if I was seeking to bring the populace of the planet to its knees, there's only one supplement I would focus on, and that would be vitamin D. So please, stop taking it. But you've also got to stop taking the calcium supplements and the iron supplements. What you need to do is really get a different kind of blood panel to find out what's really going on inside your body as it relates to uh, the, the dynamics, particularly of these key minerals that we're talking about. Also, stop taking ascorbic acid. There are, there are two different forms of vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is the shell of the car. Whole food vitamin C is the car. And trust me, you want to be driving a car when you're trying to solve problems. You want to be very mindful of the sweeteners that you're using. Stay away from high fructose corn syrup or anything that has a color. Colors are bad. Pink, yellow, blue, stay away from it. And you also want to make sure you've got plenty of fat in your diet. Uh, this idea that low fat was a good idea was a very bad idea. Um, you want to stay away from the industrialized oils that were based on omega-6. Uh, you also want to be staying away from any product that has fluoride in it. And that has a far-reaching effect. And it, and it has a profound impact on magnesium status in the, in the body. I have a very strident position on multivitamins and prenatals. I recommend people stay away from them. Again, before a multivitamin can be created, it's got to be a slurry. And, and how do you make a slurry? You've got to add water. And what do you think's in the water? Yeah, in three-fourths of the country, it's fluoride. So it's, it's a very hidden way to add fluoride to your diet. Uh, you want to stay away from citrate. Uh, it has a very known impact in the body and in the mitochondria. It disrupts. Um, the, the functionality, particularly of the liver's ability to make ceruloplasm. And it's, a, it's not a well-known um, reaction, but it is, it is there. The research is very clear about uh, the impact that citrate does have. And you want to stay away from colloidal silver. A lot of people think of that as their uh, very natural and friendly way to solve bacterial problems. Well, what it does is it really impacts copper status, because silver sits below copper on the periodic table. So if you really want to do it, use nano silver, but not colloidal silver. It's a very different beast. So you have to be very, very careful of that. So those are the steps you want to stay away from. Things that you want to really start to focus on are you want to make sure that you're using cod liver oil, something that your great grandparents had every day. They had a teaspoon. They hated it. But guess what? It made them healthy. And I can assure you that our ancestors were far healthier 100, 150 years ago back then than we are today. And it's almost an embarrassment when you think about how dependent we've become on medications and all this uh, focus around uh, supplements and nutrients. It's like it's, it's over-engineered in, in my humble opinion. But you want to begin to focus on magnesium, as we've been talking about. You want to have the whole food vitamin C. You want to start to be using the forms of B vitamins that come by way of Mother Nature, not from a bottle. No offense to the manufacturers out there. Uh, you, you just don't get the same impact. And so I focus on bee pollen, in part because I think it's really funny that Mother Nature has bees giving us B vitamins. I think that's really very cool. And rice bran is a very important source of B vitamins, but it also has something called phytic acid, 
that you've been trained to think as an anti-nutrient, when in fact, when it's taken away from food, it chelates iron out of the body. That's a good thing. And then another rich source of B vitamins is called beef liver. Uh, like I said, I've, I've had consults with 3,000 people, and I can count on two hands now eight people around the world who love to eat beef liver. Um, four of them are from the UK, two are from the States, and two are from Europe. So it's a very odd element. People are really afraid of it, but it's the best source of B vitamins. It's the best balance of iron, copper, and zinc. It's a very rich source of retinol, which is vitamin A. It's an amazing source of other nutrients that are very, very important for our body. And I would encourage you to start to embrace that as an option. Um, silica, uh, coming by way of either diatomaceous earth or horsetail or other forms, helps to pull aluminum out of the body, especially out of the liver, so that the liver is not distracted with that heavy metal, uh, so that it can, in fact, get back to making ceruloplasm. Uh, focus on the ancestral diet. Uh, it's kind of a, a derivative of, the, the, obviously, the paleo diet that's very popular now. And some additional elements are boron, taurine, and iodine. Uh, they're very, very important as it relates to managing the dynamics that we're talking about. And note that I point out iodine, at least from my standpoint, is last on the list because most people will run to it, but they don't have enough magnesium in their body to support it. Uh, and that's a, a very uh, delicate situation that people get into. But it's a very important mineral. It's just got to be at the right time. So that's the secret sauce. And there is not different secret sauces for different people. That's another uh, area where we really differ from um, a lot of conventional thought. This one set of, of um, directions, things to stop, things to start, has a profound effect on helping to restore natural metabolic balance in the body. And what I'd like to do is just share a few case studies of people who are on the MAG group, people that I've worked with, who've had some very significant uh, transformations over the last few years, particularly in the last year, as they've begun to work with this uh, secret sauce, this CP protocol. Case study here is with a young girl named Christina. Uh, over a year ago, she was very uh, distressed with a lot of emotional issues, taking a lot of medications. And you can see the transformation of her image from April of 2015 to April of 2016. And it's a very profound change that took place. Uh, her mom is an amazing mom. I think she won, I think Christina won the mom lottery. Uh, because her mom was very devoted to trying to figure out what's going on. And when she came to the MAG group, she began to read things that she had never read before. She began to make changes. She began to work with, with Christina's physician to begin to, to scale back on the medications. And what I find particularly poignant, the, the, um, the blah, blah, blah that's attached to the picture, is her actual words that she shared on the MAG group. There was, they were, she was thanking the group for all of the, the insight and the guidance that she had been given. And I think the last bullet point says it all. And what was the very first supplement we started with? Well, magnesium, of course. And it, it just helped her daughter calm down. Again, here we have this young girl. She's a stress cadet at a very early age. Well, she was, she was a magnesium desert. And as her mom began to read more and began to understand how important this mineral was, she started to introduce it into Christina's life and into her body, and it had a, a magical effect. And it's just, it's something that too few people understand how transformative that one mineral can be. But it's a very profound case study of, of what just one change can make in someone's life. And obviously she's embraced the full protocol, but the point is she knew where to start and it had a very significant effect on her daughter. And now. She's pretty much medication-free, as far as I know. I don't think she's on any, any prescription medications, which is a rather dramatic shift for her to take, particularly at this, at this tender age. Another uh, situation, uh, this particular uh, individual, Anne, lives in, in Armenia. And uh, she's been struggling with anemia uh, for almost a decade. And 
she's done exactly what convention has told her, take iron supplements, and she knew something was wrong. She wasn't feeling better. In fact, the pains and the symptoms began to build, and she happened upon the Magnesium Advocacy Group, and again, it had a very transformative effect. She began to read. She began to, to really begin to adopt these principles, and as you can see from her uh, brief testimony here, she's had a very significant shift in leg pain. Uh, she used to have a lot of soreness. That's now gone. Uh, she used to have a lot of dizziness. That's nearly gone. Uh, th the shortness of breath that she had grown up with, that is now gone. She has significantly greater energy now than she's ever had, particularly in, in her adult life. And what's also presented here are some actual blood test results. And what's intriguing is when you begin to look at three key ind indices that are there, the first one is just to look at, at the ceruloplasm. When she started the process in January of, of this year, she didn't even think to, to measure ceruloplasm. But then in May, she measured it. It was 26. And then in October, five months later, it actually had gone down. It went down a notch. But what's amazing is to think about all of those symptoms uh, that have been now removed from her body. And what's notable is that her serum iron has gone from being very low, 57 is almost, it's 57% of what it should be, and then it went above the mark. I like to see women have about 100 units of serum iron in their body. And now where is she? 102. She's right at the sweet spot. Again, by following the protocol. The same protocol that the other individual is following, Anne is following. Christina and Anne following the same protocol. Two completely different people, two completely different set of events, but following the same protocol allowed different enzyme pathways to work properly. And then what's really interesting is to see what happened to her ferritin level. It was very, very low, single digits. 7.3 is enough to get, make most physicians go apoplexic, start yammering about the need for IV uh, iron. And all she did was follow the protocol, and now her ferritin is at 24. And what are the leading clinicians looking for? They want ferritin be to be between 20 and 50. And anytime it's below 20, or anytime it's above 50, you know they have an iron problem because they have a copper problem because they're stressed out because they don't have enough magnesium. It's pretty much that simple. So here's a very striking example of how the same protocol had a profound effect uh, in another individual halfway around the world. And then back here to the States again, uh, here we have someone, uh, Bev, who's been struggling with fibromyalgia for many, many years. And she has been absolutely transformed over the course of the last year by following this very simple, very humble protocol that really focuses on maybe uh, seven or eight different nutrients. And what she wanted to do was present a picture for people to see, this is it, folks. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. And that there's a lot of bells and whistles out there in the world of nutrition. But when you really begin to understand the fundamentals of how the body works, particularly when you understand how the minerals work, where you, what you're really beginning to focus on is that's the quantum level of healing. Because that's where the energy is. That's where the electrons are flowing are at the level of the minerals. And stop worrying about hormones and all these big, big particles. It just it doesn't make sense. You've got you to fix the minerals. And that's what this very simple protocol does. And that's what it did for Bev. And she's ecstatic. Every, I guess, about four to six weeks, Bev will do another post to let people know how she is, how great she feels. She's, she is one of the great promoters of this whole concept, and she's doing great. So those are just three that I've highlighted. But know that there's an entire Facebook group that's devoted to testimonials. It's called the Morley Robbins Testimonies. And at the top of the, of the group is one of my signature statements. Listen up. There is no such thing as medical disease. There is only metabolic dysfunction caused by mineral dysregulation. 
And invariably, what causes that mineral dysregulation is what I call myth-guided diagnosis. And the three most offensive diagnoses that people are subjected to is what I call the triangle offense. <clears throat> they try to treat the thyroid. They try to treat what they think is low calcium. And they try to treat what they think is low iron. And in all three cases, by treating those three events, they create a lot of problems. And they create a lot of mineral dysregulation because it turns out that what's really in need of attention are the adrenals. Because anyone who has a thyroid issue has a burned out adrenals. Anyone who has any kind of calcium issues doesn't have enough magnesium. And anybody who has an iron issue needs more bioavailable copper that comes by way of making the liver make more ceruloplasm so the body knows what to do. It's really that simple. So please know that that that's, that particular uh, Facebook group exists so that people can learn about other testimonials. I've worked with over 3,000 clients since I got started in this work in 2008. And, and just in the last 12 months, I've worked with 1,000 people. It's a very a relentless pace. I'm very uh, excited to do it. I'm very honored to do it. I'm very humbled by it. Because, again, I didn't set out when I was a little guy Say, I know what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be magnesium man, and I want to you know, solve all sorts of health problems all over the world. That's not how I started out. But I knew, even as a little guy, I knew I was here for a reason. Well, I know what my purpose is. My purpose is to teach you what I know. I'm not trying to be the guru here. I want you to be the guru. I want to teach you what I know so that you can be the guru for your situation. And I want to help you transform your understanding of what's taking place so that you can get over your physical ailments, so that you can get on with your purpose. Because you were not put on this planet to worry about diabetes or heart disease or Lyme disease or depression or whatever, whatever the label is that you're obsessed with right now. And I don't mean to make light of it. I know it's a very serious situation. But there's a foundational imbalance that's allowing that to happen. And it's because the axle isn't being addressed. Stop worrying about the seats. Focus on the axle. That's what this group is all about. And the same, this, again, the, the ceruloplasm protocol, the secret sauce, is the same for everyone. Every race, creed, color, age, doesn't matter. I've, I've helped an eight-year-old boy who was born anemic, who was being fed iron supplements for most of his young life, and he struggled to build enough hemoglobin in his body. And now for the first time, after one month on the protocol, one month, his hemoglobin went from nine, which is really low, to almost 12 in one month. The doctors are shocked. They absolutely are mesmerized by what's going on. So I just want you to understand that there, there is no aspect of this that isn't going in terms of its reach and its ability to affect people. Uh, I have gone through a series of, of notable case studies. And just know there are hundreds and hundreds of others. There may even be thousands. I don't even know what the count is. You know, the, Someone pointed out just the other day that while there may be 68,000 people on, on the MAG group right now, that's 68,000 families. There, there are all sorts of spouses and children and friends. And we don't really know what the reach is of the group. But we know that there is a message here. There's a need for this information. And people are benefiting mightily from it. And we hope that you do as well. So let me just summarize with some, some key points here. What I'd like you to do is understand but act on this whole dynamic, particularly between magnesium and iron. They do have this very dynamic relationship with each other. And they are the railway. When magnesium is low and iron is too high, it becomes this railway for disease. It's guaranteed. Uh, and just like any railway that you might know about, any train tracks you've ever seen, those rails don't touch. Well, in the research, you don't see magnesium researchers talking about iron or iron researchers talking about magnesium. But because I understand both dynamics, I know that they, in fact, intersect and interact. And that's where... That's where all the chaos is in the body, is the interaction between those two 
key minerals. Please stop treating the seats of your Ferris wheel. You're not going to win that battle. The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to make your doctor fabulously wealthy. And you're not really going to empower yourself until you begin to focus on the axle because it's very simple steps that need to be taken to change your diet and to focus on a key set of, of nutrients in order to make that shift a reality. Also, learn to distinguish between functional iron deficiency and absolute iron deficiency. I think it's next to impossible to have what's called anemia of iron deficiency. That's an absolute shortage of iron in the body. You can't live on this planet and have a shortage of iron. But you can be on this planet and have a shortage of what's called functional iron. And if you don't have enough bioavailable copper, you will have low functional iron. And it's a very subtle distinction, but that situation, when you have low functional iron, it's called anemia of chronic inflammation. And it leads to low magnesium, low magnesium, low ceruloplasm, low serum iron, low percent saturation, and low ferritin. And I think there are a lot of you out there that meet all five of those requirements. You gotta rethink what, what's really going on with your, with your iron status in your body. Know also that excess unbound iron will lead to a loss of magnesium. Iron changes the pH of the cell. And when the cell goes acidic, magnesium hits the road. So it's going to cause a magnesium loss, which is going to lead to what's called inflammation. Inflammation does not come from Mars. Inflammation is not a disease. Inflammation is a clinical indication of magnesium deficiency. And William Wiglicki and his team at, at George Washington University proved that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And the literature is in 1992 in the American Journal of Physiology. It's a really important thing to understand is that that inflammation, which is a gateway to every condition you've ever heard of, is caused by a lack of magnesium. And when magnesium is low and inflammation exists, it will lead to what's called low storage D, or it's called low vitamin D. And everyone who thinks they have low vitamin D has nothing to do with vitamin D. It's actually, they're low in magnesium. Because it turns out that every facet of vitamin D metabolism is magnesium dependent. And if you don't know that, and you start to focus on the vitamin D, you're only going to weaken your magnesium status and solidify your inflammatory cascade even more. So understand those dynamics. Understand what the true flow of the activity is inside the body. It's very disorienting to hear that. But it's the truth. I guarantee it. And please, stop attacking the pathogens and the other guests, the heavy metals, or whatever the booga wooga issue is you think you've got. Know that all the pathogens, in fact, feed on iron. And to borrow a phrase from the French, the famous and very sexist phrase, is if there's ever a problem, it's called chercher la femme. Look for the woman. Of course the woman is causing the problem. Well, in my world, chercher la faire. Whenever there's a problem in someone's health, or well-being. I know that their iron is out of control and it's affecting their magnesium status. Cherche la faire. It's that simple. Look for the iron. And that's really the, the, the just, oh, <laughs> I thought I was done. Um, so these are my three areas of, of passion and my, my purpose. Obviously, the Magnesium Advocacy Group was formed a number of years ago. Uh, it's where a lot of information is housed. Uh, it's gotmag.org. Uh, you will, you could spend the rest of the year reading what's on that group in terms of, of the information that's there. And, and I invite you to do just that. I think you'll find it very refreshing and very um, uh, enlightening. Uh, the Magnesium Advocacy Group, obviously, you're, you're, you're here, you're interested in joining the group. Uh, as I pointed out, it was born about uh, four years ago in January. And I'm very proud of the, uh, the growth and the, the sophistication and just the quality and the caliber of information that we have available. Uh, it's it's a, a very unexpected uh, 
blessing, and I'm very, very proud of it. And just so you know where I'm going in, in the future, I'm going to be creating what I call the, the Copernican Institute for Mineral Metabolism. Uh, that's going to be launched uh, in the coming year, uh, starting in January. Uh, why Copernicus? Because Copernicus got people to stop focusing on the Earth as the center of the universe and start focusing on the sun and the same concept here. Stop focusing on the seats, focus on the axle, and get people to understand what that really means. And I'm really going to focus on two principal student groups, practitioners and the populace. And may the better group win. Because I don't really care who learns this. I know that people are going to benefit from it. And what I've, what I've recently said to a, a group of practitioners who I was meeting with, I was basically putting them on notice. I said, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you are going to become irrelevant. Because these people do understand it. And they're understanding it at the rate of 1,000 people a week. And it's probably going to go even higher as this progresses. So just know that you're part of a significant movement. It is a people's movement. I'm very proud of it. And I think it's changing lives. And it's really helping to lower the stress on this planet. And I feel very, very good about that. So those are, this is my contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I've never met a question I didn't enjoy. Uh, you can, can reach out to me at, at my uh, website, at morley at gotmag.org. Feel free to call me. I'm never afraid to share my cell phone. Uh, people are always very, oh, I'd, I'd be terrified. And, or, or when I actually answer my phone, people are stunned at first. They're like, oh my gosh, oh, I'm talking to the magnesium man. I'm like, calm down, you know, come on. You know? I, I like to tease people that I, I don't actually walk on water, but I do wear waterproof shoes, just in case. So just know that I'm, I'm out there, I'm a resource, I'm very happy to help, and I look forward to your participation and, and to your involvement in the group. And, and I'm trusting that you got the message that if you want smooth sailing, what you want to do is focus on magnesium. It is the mineral of motion. And this was the signature phrase of Mildred Seelig, uh, clearly one of the greatest uh, magnesium researchers that graced this planet. And it was is what she was most proud of, is getting people to understand and internalize what that meant. And the body is all about motion. And magnesium is what enables that to take place. So again, welcome to the group. Thank you for your time and attention. And I look forward to your, your participation going forward. Take care. Bye-bye.